If you're new to us or haven't been following, I just want to really quick talk about our setup with the roses. So we moved into this house um, pretty much just two years ago, like this month. Um, and this hybrid tea rose behind me here was the very first one we planted right away. So it's on its second full season. Um, this thing was a monster last year. If you had followed us on Instagram, you saw it got taller than the house. It was gigantic. Um, these two climbing roses were planted at the, I don't know, I think like mid season last year. So they're on their second growing season. Last year, they did not bloom nearly as much as they are right now. Like this bloom we're getting right now is absolutely amazing. Um, so I wouldn't expect if you're just planted your climbing roses, your first year, they're all gonna be focusing on growing bigger roots, but the second year, third year, you're really gonna see those blooms explode. explode. And since we liked our first hybrid tea so well, we planted this one later in the season too. So it's gonna, I think, get really big this year too. It's on its second growing season. Hey everybody, Beth here from our Liberty House and I wanted to hop on and talk to you guys really quick uh, before I head into work today and show you a little bit more about my strategy with my rose care during the growing season. You saw us back in January do our dormancy prune with all of our roses. We have two hybrid teas and two climbing roses in our backyard. And that's that video is really about setting yourself up for success during the rest of the year. In this video, I'm gonna talk about my strategies with pruning. Um, that includes like deadheading the expense roses, making sure the base of your plant is open and airy to allow airflow. Um, tips on how to water your roses, um, pests to look for, and I'm also going to talk a little bit about like different uses you can do with the roses if you're interested. Uh, last year I made rose water that I loved, but this year I want to expand on that a little bit more. So at the end I'll talk kind of about what my goals are with the herbal side use of roses. So if you're ready to get going, hit that like button, subscribe while you're down there, and let's go. Okay, so these roses really started blooming hard about a month ago and I haven't <laughs> deadheaded anything up to this point because I really wanted to wait, let it go just a little bit longer than I normally would so I could show you guys exactly what to look for um, when pruning. So let me flip the camera around and I will show you what I look for. So I'll start here on this climbing rose and you can see there's just a lot of expent flowers like this one here and even this one where the bloom is done, like the, the leaves just fall off so easily. So I'm gonna go ahead and prune all of those flowers. And when I cut this back, since it's a climbing rose, I'm gonna cut it back all the way to the main stem here. Um, just otherwise it's just gonna get really, really wide and um, you know, it's just growing out into areas where I don't want it. If you like it bushy, I mean, the pruning is really just about shape and form that you like. But personally, I'm gonna cut it all the way back and really help this plant refocus its energy on making more blooms. Also, when looking at your roses, you're also gonna be looking for different pests and um, things that could be eating your roses. Like you can see, this has been gnawed up quite a bit. And when you look here in this flower, beetles love to sleep inside the blooms. So this is a Japanese beetle hiding out in there. And if you don't know, if you come across a bug and you're just like, I don't know what that is, my cheat or what I use is Google Lens, which I'll show you here. Oh, see, there's another one right there hanging out. Um, so Google Lens is super easy to use. You just use your smartphone and you can reverse Google image search. And usually you can find something um, that looks similar and then you can find out if it's harmful or not. These Japanese beetles are not the best because they're going to perpetually eat the blooms. Um, they're not necessarily gonna be harmful to you or your pets, but they're not necessarily friendly for the blooms. So I'm gonna go ahead and when I prune, I'm just gonna get those in the bucket and, and throw them away. Another thing you might come across are spider webs. I know here in Northern California, spider webs, like just garden spiders, love to make webs around these plants. Um, so when I'm going through and deadheading again, I'm going to just try to like sweep that stuff away. These spider webs are not gonna be the best because they 
will eventually suffocate your rows and just you're allowing different diseases or pests or anything else to kind of get in into your plant area so I get rid of them also when looking at your rows you want to look at the base of the plant themselves um, because I have let this go for a few weeks longer normally I would never let it happen but all of those petals are falling to the ground here and, and they always seem to like bunch up right around the root so what you're gonna wanna do is grab some gloves and just open up that root area, which I will show you here once I grab my snippers. Um, but you just wanna make sure that this base of the plant stays really open um, and airy, and that's gonna prevent a lot of diseases like powdery mildew and um, anything else. Also while I'm down here at the rootstock, I wanna talk to you about watering your roses. Roses do not like wet feet and what that means is if you overhead water you just want to make sure you're not getting the leaves wet themselves and you're watering at the base and that is also going to prevent a lot of powdery mildew issues um, with your roses we have all of our roses on a drip system which is probably the best thing you can do for your rose plants but if you can't do that just with your hose just try to get at the base itself and prevent, and when you're pruning, just cut all the, the leaves out. So you're just gonna prevent um, that from happening. See how long that is? So let me attempt to do this one-handed. Um, but you can see it's just personal preference whether you wanna cut this entire branch all the way back here, or you know if you're enjoying some of these blooms still, just cut um, these expense ones you know, at the base right here. Um, you know, like this one still has a couple blooms on it, so I'll, I'll leave it for now. Um, same with these. It's just your personal preference on, you know, how often you want to do this. Personally, for me, I like to do a hard prune and prune it aggressively, you could say, and not have to do it quite as often. Because all this is going to do is help your rose know that it should be uh, putting its energy into more blooms rather than fixing these, if that makes sense. And when you cut, you just wanna go back, um, you know, like all of these are just falling off. You just wanna go back to that next T. Um, you know, personally, I'm just gonna cut all of these, so I'm actually just gonna follow this back here to the base and snip. And if I, I get some blooms that maybe aren't perfectly ready you know I'm okay with that because it's gonna keep blooming it wants to bloom and it's gonna be ready to keep growing so I'm gonna flip this camera around just because doing this one-handed is almost impossible and I'm I'm gonna time-lapse it for you so it goes really really quick Okay, so the, here's the aftermath of the rose prune on the climbing roses. You can see it looks awfully bare, especially to, compared to how it was, but I promise you this is gonna be very temporary. Um, you can already see, you know, this, this rose is putting off new growth, like it's healthy and pruning, the, like deadheading will just exponentially increase its blooms. this dog toy out of the way. Okay, so the, the last thing I do 
after a good pruning session is clean up all of these leaves because all these leaves are going to do is just invite all the creepy crawlies that help break down plant decay. And you wanna get them away, especially from the root stock of the plant here. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Okay, also while I'm down here, I'm gonna cut back some of the leaves. I did a really good job over the winter doing this. But um, throughout the growing season, you just want to make sure that it maintains. And I'll give you guys a little closer view of what's, what that means. I'm not sure if you can see that with this African daisy growing all over the place. But you can see here, there's our rootstock um, from this plant. And it doesn't have a whole lot of leaf growth, but I'm just going to go ahead and and prune some of this back. You might see, you know, on your lower leaves that it has like some like white stuff on it. That could be a sign of like early powdery mildew. It could be a lot of things, but um, here in Sacramento, we always struggle with powdery mildew. So I do everything I can to prevent it from happening. And sometimes you just can't prevent it completely but you wanna at least mitigate it from taking over your whole plant because it will affect its blooms. Okay. And even if you, if you use mulch or, or rocks or anything, you know, just pull it back a little bit because you want airflow right in here for a healthy, healthy plant. And when you're getting the rose blooms out. It doesn't need to be perfect, but you just don't want it to be smothered by its dead blooms. So again, it's not perfection you're looking for. Just do what you can. Hi, Liberty. Hi, Liberty. Oh my gosh, it's nine o'clock and it's already, I'm already sweating. Um, okay, so with your hybrid tea rose, you're gonna be using pretty much the same kind of concept. Um, looking for blooms that have just already gone through their life. And like I said before, if you wanna keep these because you like the color, that's totally fine. Personally, I just like to prevent all the leaves from falling off on the ground because it's a chore to pick all of those up out of the mulch. So when I prune, I if it's already looking like this, I'm gonna go ahead and pull it um, and just go through and do that. Like this one's gonna be gone, this is gone, this is gone. We have a nice cluster right here. I'm gonna be leaving that one. So like this one's gone. Do you see all that? Just like poof. This one's definitely gone. Uh, this one's gonna be gone. This one's gone. I love these blooms, it's literally my favorite. This rose right here, it's a hybrid tea. It's the um, Madam, Sweet Mademoiselle. Um, what I love about a hybrid tea rose is the newer roses are much more disease resistant than some of the older roses. So if you have a rose that you inherited with your house that's really old. We have a couple in our front yard that are just bare. They are a bear to prune and keep disease free. It's probably an older style rose and those roses just weren't bred, you could say, to be disease resistant. So you might be struggling a little bit more um, with those style roses. Um, 
that one's all right still. I'm gonna leave that. And I have another little grasshopper right there. Um, and when you're when you're pruning, you're gonna be seeing things. I haven't really talked about aphids yet, but aphids are a huge issue here in Northern California too. And they're, they like to attack new buds like this right here, these little ones, um, or even one that's like this right here. You'll just see this whole head covered in these little green bugs. I'm gonna look at my archive and see if I have a picture of it. Um, those are, Hard to prevent. We've actually had okay luck this year. And I think it's just because we're in year two of our yard being full of beneficial plants and things like trap plants. Um, we have a lot of diversity in what we grow. And that's gonna help kind of create an ecosystem that encourages beneficial insects to live and inhabit. And we have a huge population of um, ladybugs and ladybugs eat aphids. You also want to encourage like soldier beetles, things like that. And maybe in a different video, we can talk a little bit more about what we have done um, specifically to kind of create that ecosystem even though these are absolutely gorgeous, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut them. Just because I don't wanna be out here every single day. And if, um, you have the time to do that, good for you. Okay, since this doesn't have any disease or anything on it, I put all of these clippings into our compost right over here. When I have a lot of big, long stems of roses, like when we pruned back in January, We'll shred those just because they compost a little bit faster, but these little rosebuds will compost just fine. We'll, we'll cut it up in the composter. Um, but if your roses have disease, like powdery mildew, or anything like that, and you're not sure if you hot compost, it's probably better to put that in your yard waste rather than your home garden compost because that could just encourage bad diseases into the rest of your garden. So my other hybrid tea rose, this is the exact same variety as the one on the other side. So I'm gonna treat it exactly the same. Just cutting off these extent blooms. You know, if you wanna cut these and bring them into your house, they make really pretty bouquets. But for me, it's not gonna happen. And while I'm on this last one, I'll talk a little bit about harvesting rose petals for different um, like herbal uses. Oh my gosh, it's hurting. <laughs> ah! um, different herbal uses. That was just like a little, it was a lightning bug. Um, I probably could put my gloves back on, but that's okay. Um, so these roses right here, when they're already expensed, you're not gonna get all the beneficial properties. You get, um, if you were to harvest a brand new bud. So when you're harvesting for say rose water, or if you wanna make, you know, infused oils or things like that to make like lotion and things, you wanna actually harvest your blooms when they're more at this stage right here. So a little bit smaller. And then you'll um, pull off those petals basically and you'll wanna wash them because usually when they're little, they have a lot of little bugs on them. Um, but that's typically the stage um, where you would want to harvest for different herbal uses because you're going to get all a lot more of the beneficial properties out of that rose petal. Rose petals have a ton of benefits, um, like antioxidants is actually a huge source of antioxidants. Um, a lot of people drink it in their tea. Um, I've made rose petal jam in the past and that's so good. Um, rose water, um, that would, you know, you can make tea out of it that way, or just drink it or use it in different recipes. Um, but to get the most, you want to harvest when they're young, like I said. These expense ones just don't have as high of a concentrate, so they say. You know differently, let me know. Um, so this year, what I'm hoping with um, is um, maybe making like a lotion or balm with rose petals. Um, 
if you have any other ideas to make like a lotion, it's basically like creating um, like an infused oil with the rose blooms and then mixing it with different ingredients to create a balm. I actually don't know exactly how to do it yet, but I plan to learn. Um, so yeah, if you've done anything with rose blooms, let me know. I want to know. Okay, and I'm going to show you the base of this rose because I think it looks so good. Um, you see how open and airy it is? This is exactly what you want um, with your rose. And you see, I have my drip line going right at the root base, so I'm never watering on the plant itself, which it loves. Um, you can see there's a little bit of a spider web back in there. Um, I'm going to grab my cobweb thingy. I don't actually know what it's called and get that out of there. Um, or I could reach back there with my hand too, but that seems kind of scary. Uh, um, so yeah, this is kind of what you're looking for. This is kind of what you're looking for in terms of airflow at the base of your rose plants. Okay, the sun's kind of starting to come in as it gets later, but you can see this rose, uh, which is the older one, has a lot more growth going on here. The root stock itself is quite a bit bigger. Um, but basically what I want to do is I'm gonna get rid of this new growth right here completely. Because when you shape your plants, you don't want interweaving um, stems. And I talked about that a bit in the January video when you're shaping your plant for the growing season. Because when these plants, you see how spiky that is? When they cross, they're cutting each other. And that's gonna invite disease. Um, oh, can I reach back there? In different, I didn't cut that bacteria to get in with your rose. Sorry, my camera skills are probably so bad today. Um, and you just want to prevent that as much as possible. So I wanna keep this nice and open. And by keeping the leaves out of the main area, you're gonna be able to see a lot better when those new growth roses try to uh, grow like this one right there just did. Okay, the last thing I want to talk about is fertilizing your roses. Um, roses are heavy feeders and they especially like nitrogen rich soil. So what you want to look for, almost every nursery is going to have a fertilizer designed specifically for roses. And that's the easiest answer for what you want to look for. Um, when picking out a fertilizer. This is the E.B. Stone Organics, which is a really great brand we love. Um, and when it comes to frequency and how to physically, like what you should be doing, whether it's mixing with water and then watering, or if, you, if it's a granul granular, you want to spread it around usually the drip line of your plant and then water it in. The frequency will also be listed on the back as well as the specifics on what that fertilizer or how, how to use that specific fertilizer. So this one right here, um, we, we should have fertilized this a few weeks ago when it first started blooming, um, but we didn't and that's, it's fine. We're gonna fertilize today. Um, but it says and a cup and a half per plant, evenly around the drip line, which is about eight inches from the base. And then we're gonna water it in. Um, frequency, it says like three times during the summer. Um, other fertilizers might be monthly, um, but we're gonna do it today and then probably mid to late June and again in August. Um, so that's about every six to eight weeks for this specific one. Um, and that's just gonna help feed your, your plant and help it bloom, have new growth, have healthy roots, all the good stuff. So just make sure if you want to grow your roses better, fertilize, feed it.
One rows down, three to go. Um, and you can see, so I watered it in by hand. Um, and the reason I did that was just to make sure that the fertilizer area, since I'm eight inches from the base, my drip line isn't there. My drip line is at the base itself. So I wanted to hand water it in. I know it goes against everything I just said about not spraying your leaves, etc. But one time is not gonna hurt your plant. Or even if you do it every once in a while, it's fine. You just don't wanna repeatedly do it. Um, and if you are hand watering, just remove the leaves higher up on your rootstock just to prevent that spray. Um, especially if you live in a more humid climate, it, it would probably um, be a little bit more, more, more worse for it. I don't, I don't know what the right word is, but I hope you guys know what I'm saying. Does anyone else have a dog that's obsessed with the hose? Liberty is. <laughs> She's been following me ever since I got this hose out. And I just want to know, does your dog do this? Okay, two more to do. If you're still with me, I appreciate you. the rose I'm not excited about because it has all the cobwebs around the base but I can do it I'm gonna do it are you gonna help me Lib? are you gonna help me probably not huh hey, hey, hey. I just noticed I have a giant weed back here how did I not Notice this thing. Of course, didn't break it off. There we go. There's little roots. I'm legit hot. I just, well, I don't know why I even got ready. I just, I'm gonna need a shower before I go back to work. But that's a wrap. You have now seen my strategy behind how I take care of my roses throughout the season. It's all about deadheading, staying on top of pruning, um, keeping that base open and airy, watering as much as you can without getting the leaves wet um, and looking out for pests like those beetles if you see them remove them aphids if you see them remove them um, and of course I talked a little bit about how I want to kind of utilize these roses like we're an urban gardener and we <laughs> we like to use things from our what we grow um, and roses are no exception to that like instead of purchasing lotion or chapstick or rose spray or jam, whatever it may be from the store, like why not experiment a little bit with something that's growing plentifully in our yard. So if you wanna see more of that, if you wanna see anything else, if you have any other questions regarding the roses, 
please drop it below in the comments. I'd love to see what you guys want to learn more about. So thanks again um, for watching. I hope you have a fantastic week and I'll see you next time. Oh my gosh, I've just been looking around all over for these. Why would I set them right there? Seriously.